Welcome to Kruger Park. Previously on It's Tip Top Fishing Adventures, I drove past some rocks. We drove past a fake lion. The family was very excited. We drove all the way from Punta Maria all the way down to Shingueti, where we would have two nights camping. I ate some of mom's rusks. We saw a rather large herd of buffalo. Then I saw my first ever yellow billed ox pecker. Woohoo! Then we watched an impala regurgitate its food and eat it again. Oh yummy. Then we watched a giraffe try to make more giraffes. It is a bit of a failure. Then we watched giraffes watch us. And then we had fun in the car. Mimi, Lala here, Baba. <laughs> Does it mean like something sleep? Then I almost murdered a suicidal squirrel. Now back to this episode. Firstly, we saw a beautiful Cape Vulture. These guys are seriously endangered. We lose lots of them down to power lines, poisonings and habitat loss. So make sure to check out the organization Velpro who are trying to help breed these beautiful birds. Hello, how's it going? We're looking at these vultures and there was lions spotted here yesterday. So we're trying to find them. Oh, Amazing! Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. That's it. Okay, Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. So Send our love back to America. I reckon we go. No, how do we turn around? No, there will be more loops along the river. See, they were stopped just along here, though. Mm. So we close. Yeah, yeah, they are. Right, yeah. Where? Right, yeah. How camouflaged are the backs of these cats? These are two female lions, otherwise known as biggest catters, and these guys were just chilling. What lions do best? Lions! <laughs> We've got two females here. So this is why I say you can either drive really fast or really slow. If you drive slow, you can spot these guys. Because if you drove fast, not a chance you're seeing them. Hey? What a beautiful, elegant, majestic, wonderful cat at licking its private parts. Thank you very much, cat. Well, these cats can sleep up to 22 hours a day, and it's actually a very interesting strategy whereby they rest, they are almost motionless, and animals tend to stumble upon them. These cats react quickly and often catch things from being asleep. In the wild, it is all about energy conservation. And for us, it's all about wildlife conservation. So while these two have a little nap and hunt at the same time, we're going to take you to our next animal, which is a double banded sand grouse. This is a beautiful male. The female is extra camouflaged. And then we saw this brown snake eagle. As the name suggests, these guys are specialist snake eaters. And believe it or not, these guys chow black mambas. Badass. Then we saw this ugly ass. Well, he's not that ugly. But this blow Villabius allowed us to get nice and close so we could see all of his intricate details. Like the scuff marks on his horns. Telling stories of his battles for his territory. Where are we? We are at the Tropic of Capricorn in the Kruger National Park. Quite north of the south part. There's some really profound stuff from Carmen. Yeah, Tropic of Capricorn eh? Look at that. And that rock was donated by Dion and Elsa Truter, November 2001. Quite cool that it's a tropical Capricorn. I'm more excited that I can get out of the car. <laughs> so that's our car. Got the big tent tied to the trailer. Mom taking photos and staying close to the car in case a lion decides to come and chow her. 
Speaking of my car, Helga, this beautiful X-Trail has been taking us on this wonderful adventure and she has been doing so great. We had plenty of space, everyone could wriggle their toes and feet and I can't wait to take her on a bit of a more challenging adventure. A little bit of 4x4 action, you know, see what this girl can do. So what's nice about the north of the Kruger is that you get in particular two things. You get uh, yellow billed ox peckers, which I really like and then you get the baobabs and the baobabs are just something that is iconically Africa they're super old super big super amazing looking trees and yeah there's something about a baobab that when you look at it you go wow there's just more to life than just our little silly lives because that baobab on that that hill has seen so much more than we can ever imagine how bloody amazing then we were off to wonderful Moy Place. And what a Moy Place it is. The English translation to Moy Place is like wonderful farm, pretty farm. And a pretty farm it is. So we had some scavengers running around trying to get a scrap or two. And it was just a wonderful time to eat and chat to family in the most beautiful place in the world. Now if you're lucky enough to go to Moy Place picnic spot, make sure to find Joman. Joman is the man who has been looking after Moy Place for years and years and years and years. He's a wonderful man and if you ask really nicely, he's going to show you these little Scops owls who live around Moy Place. But speaking of things that live around Moy Place... Welcome to Kruger. As you see, you are welcome to watch our big, one of the big five. The two big huge elephants. <laughs> Thanks. And what an honor it was to meet German. What a legend. Now, if you're thinking about how close we were to the elephant, we were that close. But I was completely relaxed because German was relaxed and the elephants were nice and relaxed. Now, those two were about five tons each. After Moy Place, it was time to go to my bucket list campsite, Tsenze Rustic Campsite. And Tsenze had a lot to live up to. I'd seen some fantastic videos from 4x4 Venture, Get Out Go, and Edward Bath. All of their links will be in the description below. So we are here at Senze. There's the camp behind me. I'm very excited to be here. It is such a difference between Shingwetsi and Senze. So Shingwetsi, you've got campsites everywhere, piled upon each other, one on top of the next. It's not very pleasant, to be quite honest, but it puts you in the middle of the park, which is what you want. I'm hearing stuff in the grass. It's very little, whatever it is. But Tsenze, you've got a bit of privacy, like down there you can see the next campsite, which is miles apart. Um, there's no electricity here, but it is one of the few rustic places where you come in, there's no generators, and you get a bunch of people who really appreciate the bush. So, yeah, Tsenze is so far my favorite campsite of Kruger. Um, we've also got fantastic hosts, hosts that are super friendly. Um, you saw my main man there in the beginning showing us scops owls and showing us the flipping huge bull elephants and doing a fantastic intro, if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> and yeah, the campsite is set up. Panels are ready for tomorrow morning to, to power the battery system. If you are keen, um, I'm going to do a full video on that battery system to show you how I power a campsite that is off the grid. And yeah, we're settling down for tonight. No clouds in the sky. And hopefully we're going to see some beautiful stars, hopefully an owl or two, and um, if we're lucky, a shooting star and a night jar. Wouldn't that be great? And I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. So for just a moment, I'm going to shut up so that you can listen to what we listen to. Good morning. It's a nice crisp morning in the bush. The night sounds were amazing. We had hyenas, lions, hippos, uh, varroas, eagle owls, we had uh, night jars, we had elephants crunching bush. Yeah, just fantastic. 
and now we just had a fish eagle. The sun is just starting to come up, but like not enough to have any light to film. And we are getting some coffee up and running. And then we're going to try hit the park at six o'clock. Six o'clock sharp, because that's when everything moves. I'm very excited. We're on the road. It's 13 past six, so not our target, but close enough. And we've heard some lions in the area, heard a leopard in the area, and we're gonna try and find it. Let's see if we can find the leopard. So down below, we have a hippopotamo. It's otherwise known as a sea cow, which is pretty much a super fat cow that lives in the water. Um, they've got ears and eyes above their head, their nostrils stick up above the water, and they are grumpy as hell. One top tip, if a hippo charges, run. It's one of the few animals in the bush that doesn't mock. He just moves. And if you want a really grumpy person, look at the back here. No. Yes. It's because this I, is another I, I, hippopotamite. I think the lions are going, eh? <laughs> listen. Let's go. We're hearing some lions. Let's listen. Sorry, sorry. How's it? Oh, amazing. Oh, is she, is she walking this way? Oh, amazing. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> My mood. <laughs> sorry. So badly behaved. <laughs> What is it, Keith? Lion. And off we went again to search for lions. We did not see those lions, sorry. But we did see hippos, this ominous looking crocodile, a bushbuck female, this stunning starling, and this brown hooded kingfisher. All those birders let me know what type of starling that is. And then we saw this wonderful waterbuck. What a majestic beast. Then we had these two nana brains, very happy to be here. And then we had a wonderful fish eagle on a nest, and then a lifer, the first time I'd ever seen a booted eagle. Then we saw a malachite kingfisher, one of the cutest little kingfishers out there. Then we saw these two Egyptian geese, probably flying over to Blixem another pair of Egyptian geese. They're so bloody territorial. Then it was back to our wonderful campsite to relax, get something to eat, and just enjoy ourselves. We were staying in Camp 2. Camp 2 is fantastic because it's next to the fence, next to the entrance, and it's quite big. So we charged up some devices and then went for a walk. So we are giving Helga a bit of a rest. And we're going to walk around Senze. Hey, Carmen. Yeah, stretch our legs. See if we can see some exciting animals. What happened was last night someone gave us an infrared light and we came along looking for things and they said there's an elephant here. So we looked and we looked and we looked. I saw a huge trunk of a tree and I looked up it, okay, can't find it. Looked up the tree again, it was actually the elephant's leg and it was just here. And it seemed to go up and up and up and up and the body was high, like above above the top of those trees almost. I felt as though I was in a fairy tale. What's here, Dad? We want to be very careful and very quiet because, as you know, bats sleep in the daytime. If you listen to them up there, they're having a bad night because they're <laughs> making a hell of a noise and it's daytime. So, it's 
afternoon and we're going to go for a quick drive now uh, sunset drive and then at five o'clock we've got a bit of a surprise where we're going to go looking for something very specific and something very famously Tenzi. And what a wonderful game drive it was. Driving around with mom, we got to see some quite cool things. Like this Tessabi. These Tessabis are quite fast. They don't look it, but they're bloody quick. Then we saw a nice big herd of buffalo. They were really relaxed and not the biggest bulls I've ever seen. Then we got to see one of my Kruger highlights. This wonderful saddle bull stalk, wildebeest in the background, and then a juvenile fish eagle. And it got even better when we saw this Burroughs eagle owl. These incredible birds used to be called giant eagle owls. What a privilege it is to see such a beautiful bird. Then it was back to Tenze to show you that surprise we were talking about earlier. I cannot wait. So now it's time for the surprise. Mom, what is Tenze famous for? Ooh, ooh, it's, it's famous for crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> it's famous for owls. So we've already seen Scops owls, which we saw yesterday. And we're hoping to see a barred owl, which is a little bit bigger than a Scops owl and looks like the bigger version of a pearl spotted owl. Pearl spotted owl was here this morning but we didn't get to see it and then there was a wood owl around as well but these kids actually scared it away which is absolutely awful before we go to the owl we've got another cool surprise for you and it's in the shape of something absolutely massive is he still eating or is he pretending to eat? No, he's actually still eating. A top tip is that elephants, if they pretend to eat, they put things in, like near their mouths and they don't really eat, that's when they're grumpy. So about 30 meters away, we've got a bull elephant. How amazing is that? Let's go see the barred owl. I can hear it. Apparently it's the female talking. I was so chuffed that we got to see this little female. Now, these little guys eat little insects and little mammals and the reason why she was getting more active in the day is because the day was nearly finished. And this is also the finish of this episode. Please join us next time for episode 3, our final episode of our epic Kruger adventure. A quick thank you to our awesome patrons for keeping this channel going. Thank you guys. Until next time, live your adventure. <laughs>